Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and today we are here to cover IGN Day 3. And today, this one does, I would say, contain spoilers. Uh, not one that upset me fully for knowing, but I have a feeling will upset some of you guys if you knew uh, this information before going into the film. So I would say avoid the link. I'm going to put the link down below for those who want to check out the full video and the full article over at IGN from Terry Swartz once again. Uh, I'll put a link down below, but I would say if you don't want any spoilers, you want to go into the movie clean, best to walk away from this one because I feel like this actually has genuine spoilers in it. Uh, not ones that I think ruin the film for me, like I said, but it could for some of you guys. So I'm trying to keep that in mind and I want to be upfront with you guys so you're not just surprised with anything. And that's why my videos are, you know, titled IGN, you know, day one, day two, day three, because I think even some of the, you know, information that I could have named the episodes might have been spoilers. So I'm trying to avoid it at all costs. Uh, so, so if you're out there and you can't watch the episode, I'm so sorry. We'll see you in the next one, hopefully for sure. Um, but in this episode, we are going to talk about the IGN coverage for today, September 19th. And this is Venom, new information revealed about why the symbiotes come to Earth. And there was a lot of speculation. If you remember early on, and I'm going to try not to show too many of the images at this point uh, because we've already covered a lot of them, you know, overall. Uh, but we early on we showed, uh, you know, we had those images from Twitter about the guy who was actually at the Life Foundation. Uh, they were filming in his building, and they had like a little space probe and like a little thing, you know, outer space like a shuttle and everything. And these were all things that turned out to be in the film. Not only just that room, but then we also see the launch pad at the end of the film with the trailer. We see the space shuttle kind of, you know, looking a lot like that model version. And then there's like a spidery looking space probe uh, that is like out there in the universe somewhere collecting samples of stuff and looking for other life. And those were all things we talked about early on. And now all that is coming to fruition and we're getting to the actual answers and the root of what these items are. Uh, so in this, they talk heavily about Planet of the Symbiotes, which if you remember in our earlier videos, I kept saying, oh, a lot of people are focusing on Lethal Protector and how this story pertains to Lethal Protector, but they're leaving out the fact that Ruben Fleischer said that also Planet of the Symbiotes was involved. And so we immediately, you know, in our early episodes, reviewed Planet of the Symbiotes. We made a full video discussing it, breaking it down. And, uh, and we, there was a lot of things we gleaned from it that are turning out to be true. Uh, so what happens here at the, I guess at the opening of the movie is that there is going to be a comet, uh, you know, moving through space and on the comet are a bunch of symbiotes and they're just kind of floating through space on this comet and they're kind of coincidentally heading for Earth's atmosphere. And so the Life Foundation has this space probe out in space that is searching for life because that is their mission. They're looking for, you know, ways to move mankind from Earth to outer space and they're looking for anything that, you know, could possibly help them. And as luck would have it, they find this comet. And so when they send the probe in to investigate, it collects the samples of the symbiotes that are on that comet. And uh, it is more than just Riot and Venom, obviously. There are other symbiotes on there, as we saw with the yellow one and the blue one as well. Uh, so hopefully the yellow one is Scream, right? And then, so what happens is they, you know, they, the Life Foundation, you know, brings it back to Earth, but I guess it crashes. Uh, maybe one of the symbiotes gets loose. And, uh, you know, we don't know. This is all speculation on my part. Uh, the, but somehow it crashes or something crashes and uh, the Life Foundation has to go and retrieve their stuff before the government or anyone else gets involved. And they do talk to Oliver Skull again and also Paul Franklin. And they mention about the Life Foundation and how it's pretty much a cover-up. It's almost like the Umbrella Corporation. They have, like, this face of, like, oh, we do this. This is what we provide. This is the kind of stuff we provide for humanity. But really what pays for the company is these, you know, I guess not really illegal, but they are illegal uh, because I guess the government and other people might be involved, but they do these illegal experiments on human beings and uh, they're trying to, again, uh, further humanity's evolution. And uh, that is very different than the comics. We've talked about that to ad nauseum, but I was saying if they did their original comic book plan, like where they like build a bunker underground and they're trying to outlive the apocalypse and the Cold War and everything, um, the problem with that is they already did that in Resident Evil 6, the movie final chapter. That was already the plot of that movie and it was pretty bad, so I'm glad they're not you know revisiting that in another Sony movie so soon and I'm glad they're trying to do something different with the Life Foundation and hopefully make them more interesting but also do something that fits more of the story that they're trying to tell and it sounds like that's what they're doing so the symbiotes that are on that comet they want to be caught according to Paul Franklin they want to be captured 
they're out there looking for other life forms and ha you know and looking for other habitable planets for them to invade and they have yet to ever find a planet where they work so well uh, symbiotically with the you know the life forms of that planet so when they find humans riot is kind of you know digging it and so are some of the other symbiotes uh, it's the first time they get that kind of interaction in a long time and he does mention that they are an ancient race from space we don't know a lot about them uh, they're from the planet Clintar so it looks like a lot of the core elements of the the lore is intact uh, but also following that planet of the symbiotes uh, storyline where they you know some a handful of symbiotes come to earth and while they're here they build a gateway to try to bring symbiotes from clintar to earth so they could do a full-scale invasion i don't think that's the story of this movie i think the rocket and somehow is going to tie into that at the end of the film but uh, i don't want to speculate too much on that uh, because i'll probably be wrong anyway uh, but i also want to see where the movie goes uh, and, you know on my own and stuff so uh yeah it's it's pretty neat but this i thought this uh breakdown and this thing that terry goes over where they look at how the life foundation is involved and what their mission is and then how the symbiotes come to earth i thought this one was very very interesting and it got me very excited for the movie showing how much effort was put into the background of these elements because you know as we saw in spider-man 3 literally like a random you know like asteroid breaks up into space lands on earth and then the symbiote happens to land right next to peter parker and it's so coincidental and there's no real backstory given minus one or two lines from dr connor's later on so the fact that they're going this length to give some kind of backstory to them and give them a purpose and to where it's not arbitrary that they're floating through space, they are floating through space on purpose to find planets to inhabit and take over. That's neat to me, and I really dig that. So that's uh, information I would say is spoiler heavy uh, for me. It's uh, you know it doesn't ruin the movie, but I know some of you out there, you know, hopefully you, you turned away at the beginning of the video. But if you stayed and you knew about all this information, let me know what you think down below. And while we're talking about slight spoilers, let's go ahead and mention the Venom versus Riot scene, uh, and then one other scene that uh, someone wrote to me, uh, our friend Reese who said, hey, in your early speculation video, you were actually right about something. And uh, I am very rarely right about stuff. So let's talk about that. And let's talk about the Venom versus Riot scene real quick. So I figured I didn't want to make too many videos with uh, spoilers in them. So if someone isn't watching this video, uh, then they, they're going to miss this part too, which is good because I know they don't want spoilers. So there is a Venom vs. Riot sequence, and I'm not going to show the clip up here uh, because I don't know if that's allowed or anything. Uh, but a lot of you guys did see it, and you probably saw it on my Twitter. I retweeted it, and then uh, some, you know, Reese, I know, has shared these images up on his Instagram as well. So I'll put a link to his account down below. You can watch the clip, two clips we're about to talk about there. Um, but in the first clip with Venom vs. Riot, it's just a quick scene it's like maybe 10 seconds and it shows venom and riot fighting on the bridge nearing the launch pad and it's pretty neat it's very intense and you see that uh, riot is very quick for a symbiote his size he kind of like he kind of spins and moves he makes like an anvil and slams it down try to get venom he makes an axe and tries to cut him uh, he looks very very vicious and it looks like he's beating up like a it, it looks like you know a, a, a trained fighter fighting like someone who's just starting out because Venom is getting his butt handed to him. So it looks like Venom is definitely the underdog in this movie and Ruben Fleischer did say that in previous interviews how he wanted Venom to feel like the underdog in this fight, almost like a David and Goliath thing. And if you think Venom is big and he, you know, outshines everyone else and when he fights guards and, you know, soldiers and everything, he kicks their butt, um, you do have this moment where uh, he is now overpowered by something. And so that's pretty neat. I'm glad they're, you know, adding that element where you're like, oh wow, what could stop this guy? And then Riot shows up and you're like, oh, okay. Um, so anyway, that little clip was pretty cool. I thought it was awesome. But again, some of you might consider it spoilers. But those of you who are still watching this part of the video probably don't. So let me know what you think of it down below. Uh, and then also, uh, I will mention the, the scene that Reese was like, dude, you were right. Uh, so early on when we broke down the first trailer, uh, I, also, I talked about there was a scene where Eddie Brock goes, why would we do that? You know, he just randomly says it and you don't know why. There's no context for it. It just shows a bunch of guys laying around him. And I said in that video, I go, oh, you know what would be funny is if, uh, if the suit says uh, we should eat their brains. And then Eddie goes, why would we do that? And I was like, that would be the perfect thing to say for Eddie to give that kind of response. Well, it turns out that's exactly what happens. Uh, so like I said, normally when I speculate stuff, I'm like way off. Uh, but this was neat to see uh, because I was trying to think uh, on a writer's standpoint, like what would make him have that reaction and I would try to put myself in the character shoes I'm like if I was in a room surrounded by bodies that were on the ground and I knew about the symbiote like I know the comic book version the comic book version always wants to eat everyone eat, you know eat everyone's brains so I would just imagining it asking that to Eddie and then Eddie's like what what why is that even an option uh, so turns out that's the case so again I'm not going to show the clip here 
but uh, Reese's Instagram account does have it. So I'll put a link to that down below. You can go check it out. He has both of these clips on his page. If you haven't seen them, make sure you watch them. They're pretty awesome. Make sure you give him a follow. Really nice guy. And uh, and I appreciate you guys all waiting for these videos. You know, I know I've been uh, working really hard on other stuff right now, but I'm glad I was able to at least record five or six videos for you today. And I'll try to get my Venom 6 discussion, my Secret Invasion, because we're still talking about Matt Gargan. And I want to wrap up that in Dark Avengers before the Venom movie comes out. So I only got two weeks to do that. So I'm going to try to pump out some more comic book discussion videos next week and the week after for you guys. Uh, so that we can we can get back to the Eddie Brock stuff. Uh, that's my goal, is to do that right after the movie comes out. Um, and then we'll talk about First Host number 4 and some other things in future videos coming up. But for today, I think this is going to be all I record. Uh, so thank you guys for watching the videos as always. Let me know what you think of all this information in the comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.